Maria Dickin was born in Castleland Road, Hackney in 1870. Her father, William George Dickin, was a minister of the Free Church and Maria grew up with meagre possessions but a strong education and sense of self. When Maria married, she volunteered in the slums of inner city London to help impoverished women and children. It was there that Maria saw the plight of working animals, as well as dogs, cats, rabbits and donkeys huddled together, suffering with a host of debilitating and painful injuries and illnesses. Well, it really came, the climax came one night when my little dog, my little Yorkshire dog, of whom I was very, very fond, he was horribly ill. And I had, naturally, the best uh, advice and the best medicines and every comfort that he could have, and I stayed up one whole night with it. Well, during the night, it looked so ill. By the way, I determined to have it just painlessly put to sleep the next day. I, I never liked him to suffer too long. But at any rate, when I took her up in my arms in the middle of the night, and she was looking so pathetically to me, I just put my face down onto hers, and I heard her give a sob of weariness and pain. And it struck me, this is a human sob. What's the difference between that sob and the sob of poor suffering humanity? I don't know which of us suffered the most that night when I saw in, in my, my mind, I could see suffering animals all over the world without anybody or anything to help them. And I thought, this kind of thing can't go on. Somebody must do something about this. And then I've learned in life, if you want anything done, do it yourself. These experiences moved Maria into action. She set up the first ever dispensary in Whitechapel and with basic equipment she hung a sign outside which read Bring your sick animals, do not let them suffer. All animals treated, all treatment free. After a slow start, the makeshift dispensary was soon seeing over a hundred pets a day. Before long, word had spread about the place where animals could be treated for free and demand far outstripped the meagre supplies and space available. Maria soon branched out and, by 1922, seven dispensaries were opened in London, treating over 70,000 cases a year. By the early 1940s, PDSA had branched out across the UK, with a presence in over 50 towns and cities. As well as helping to treat sick and injured pets, Maria also recognised that in the war-torn Britain of 1943, animals were playing a vital role in the war effort both at home and on the front line. She instituted the PDSA Dickin Medal to raise the status of animals in society and recognise the key role that they play in the lives of humans. Thanks to Maria's vision, our Animal Awards programme lives on today. The PDSA Dickin Medal, PDSA Gold Medal and the PDSA Order of Merit seek to celebrate and recognise the role of animals, their bravery, devotion and dedication to duty. One story that encapsulates why the Animal Awards programme exists is that of Joshua and his owner Jackie, who's a PDSA client. It was back in 2009, um, I have epilepsy and it is quite brittle. And um, I was out walking Josh, we used to go down to Kent um, dog training. And I was walking Josh and Summer along the seafront and I was about to cross the road and felt weird and that was the last I remember um, but witnesses have told us and the ambulance staff that turned up that Josh because I went into the road I nearly got hit by cars so Josh went over my body so he basically braced himself to, to stop me getting hit wouldn't let anyone come near me until the ambulance crew arrived um, twice he almost got hit by a car and he actually got glanced and, and a chap who witnessed the event put his vehicle in a place of safety to protect Joshua and myself um, and then when the ambulance crew came Josh still stayed by me but allowed them to do the work and, and they're perfect, you can never repay your dog when it saves your life. You know, to them it was just like another job, give them, a, give them a biscuit but I mean Josh we lost unfortunately nine weeks ago, he had a brain tumour 
and the PDSA, they, they both go to bow. And I think I've got the only dogs that, that have to be dragged out of the vets. They've been going there since they were six weeks and the staff there are remarkable, even down to the way they were so brilliant with Joshua, um, you know, looking after him with, with his fits and everything else he was having in the end. Today, PDSA touches the lives of more pet owners than any other animal charity. Maria's legacy now spans 51 pet hospitals, 380 pet practices, two dedicated pet check vehicles which treat thousands of dogs and their owners every year. Then there's our community and education programme. This reached over 60,000 children last year, talking about responsible pet ownership. PDSA's paw print on the UK continues to help thousands of pet owners in need and its work has attracted supporters from around the globe. I came across uh, Maria Dickens' name quite by chance. Um, I must have, I think I was looking at some uh, interesting people uh, perhaps to find uh, where they're buried and then one thing led to another. Uh, to my astonishment, I discovered that uh, Maria, Maria Dickin was uh, didn't have a blue plaque. So then uh, uh, I started to get the ball rolling on this, and uh, much to my uh, pleasure, the uh, the uh, English Heritage uh, accepted the proposal. Well, I discovered doing research that she was a uh, very determined woman who uh, apparently uh, incurred the wrath of uh, the establishment. Uh, in London and uh, her very famous quote that if you want to get something done uh, you have to do it yourself and I was very impressed by that because for a woman of, of, of her generation at that period th this was really quite uh, tackling the uh, taking on the uh, the establishment was it, it impressed me enormously actually it is with great pleasure that we celebrate Maria Dickens English Heritage blue plaque she was a true promoter of animal welfare and is a treasured founder of PDSA.